Okay, in John 5 and 39, it says, Search the scriptures, for in them ye think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. Now, Jesus told the unbelieving Jews of that day to search the scriptures, because if they would search the scriptures, they would find him. They would realize that he is the Messiah, the one that Moses spoke about, and the one that they've been waiting for for a long time. But the scriptures that he told them to search in that day was the was the Old Testament, the Old Covenant. Uh, they were prophetic in nature. They they testified of him because the the prophecies over over somewhere over three hundred prophecies uh, in the in the Old Testament. Uh, speak about his first coming and that's what I want to talk about <clears throat> this morning is that his his first coming the rapture of the church and then let me rephrase that the first coming is when he was born of a virgin and then they he lived among uh, among them for 30 years 33 years something on that timeline but and then they took him out and hung him on it because they didn't believe him you see he told them if you don't think I'm I'm him then search the scriptures look at the scriptures study the scriptures and see if they testify of me and surely they do they testify of him being the very one that Moses spoke of because Moses said that Lord thy God shall rise up a prophet like unto me him shall you hear and and Jesus was that Messiah and the, old, and the scriptures in the Old Covenant that he told them to search out uh, testified they would have they would have understood they could they would have comprehended that he was the Messiah <clears throat> but we all know that they took him out there on a the cross and crucified him which we all know that had to happen because Jesus had to die. He had to be the supreme sacrifice of God to be able to save us from our sin. We always want to remember when you look at Jesus and you see him on that cross, that should have been me and that should have been you. He had no sin. We were the sinners, but he died in our place that we wouldn't have to uh, we wouldn't have to <clears throat> wouldn't have to die. So the first coming, the rejection of him, him being put on the cross, and then the and then he said, if I go away, I will come again and, re and receive you unto myself. So, and he will. He'll come again just as surely. The scriptures taught he would come the first time. The scriptures also teach that he'll come the, se he'll come the second time. And in between the first coming and the second coming is what we call the rapture of the church okay the first coming he come to the earth the second coming he comes back to Mount to the earth on Mount Olives exactly where he ascended into heaven from but in the church the, the first coming he touches the earth the second time coming he touches the earth but the rapture 
he don't touch the earth. And that's where a lot of people get a lot, make a lot of mistakes. They don't understand that. Is that they want to say that's three comings, and the Bible don't teach three comings. There's only two comings. His first coming when he was born of a virgin, and the second coming when he comes to the earth and actually touches the earth in both of those cases. But the, but the, but the rapture of the church, he don't come to the earth. He don't, he don't, he, we go up to meet him. But I don't want to talk about the rapture just yet. But I, I want to show that this is a, a that the plan of God, my phone keeps going off. This, the, the plan of God is progressive. Progressively, the plan of God is worked out. It started for us when God made man and woman and placed them in the Garden of Eden. That was the beginning, as near as I can tell, uh, of the plan of God that would just progressively, you know, the Bible says known unto to God are all his works from the beginning of the earth and God started time then with Adam and Eve and he shows that time in this in the days of the week he, he created everything in six days and on the seventh day he rested well each one of those days according to to Peter he said a day with the Lord's a thousand years and a thousand years is a day so each one of those days represent 1,000 years. And progressively, we watch those days uh, progressively coming to an end. Where we, we are in the sixth day or the 6,000 years from the creation of the world. So the progressive program of God, and it can't be stopped, okay? God's program cannot be stopped. You see, they tried to stop his program in the Garden of Eden. Satan attacked the first uh, the, Adam and Eve. <clears throat> and in so doing, he was trying to stop the program of God. But he couldn't stop it. When Jesus was born of the virgin, if you remember Herod the king, who was a very evil, evil king, uh, he tried to kill Jesus to stop Jesus from becoming a king and he felt like Jesus was going to take his kingship away so he, he killed all the babies if you remember the horrible story that you read in the scriptures hoping that he would he would kill uh, the little baby Jesus so <laughs> Satan's designed to try and and destroy Jesus uh, failed at the first event and he he couldn't stop him and he won't stop him at the rapture of the church and he won't stop him at coming back to Mount Olives there in Jerusalem at the end of the Great Tribulation even though it's progressive and it's being worked out and when you study the scriptures and you read the scriptures, uh, you'll find that his program is very, very progressive. But even if it's progressive, it will eventually come to an end. And the end, as far as I'm concerned for us, is the second coming of Jesus Christ. And uh, because that, that seems to wrap up the progressiveness of the church because that when he comes back at the second coming we come back with him okay and and then jesus starts another function called a thousand years millennial reign and then he'll go in to do the great white throne judgment where all will be judged who did not accept jesus christ as their savior and they will be turned into hell and you don't want to go there well then after that there's another little war then the new jerusalem is seen coming down from god out of heaven and 
but the, but we, if by the time the church comes back with him, the progressiveness of the of him, as far as I'm concerned, because we've been with him for seven years when he comes back at the end and we come with him. So we have our new bodies. We don't have the old bodies. Our new bodies has been raised and we have the same glorified body that Jesus Christ had when he come out of the grave. So God's plan is very, very progressive. And don't forget that. If you understand how, how his plan works, and it's progressive and 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 and, and for for mankind the six days are almost over and it's time for him to come back and take and receive his church and take her home to be with him and then when he's done that then then the great tribulation seven years are poured out on the earth and and then jesus comes back so at the end of that time so the progressiveness is is we just happen to be born in that plan of progression at the end of it <laughs> amen we're just we just happen to be uh born at the time that that's the the plan of god is for man and for the church is coming to its conclusion we don't know we don't know how much time is left but we do know that his plan is progressive and when you when you study the scriptures and you keep in mind that god's plan is progressive i know i'm saying that a lot but i want you to understand that we all need to understand it's progressive and you can read in the scriptures how it all started and each stage each thousand years all the way down to the conclusion of the six thousand year or the sixth day and we're getting ready to start the seven thousand years which is the day of rest and that'll be a thousand year day also so we want to look at the scriptures search the scriptures for in them you you think you have eternal life and they are they which testify of me okay but i want to, on this video and I know I'm rattling on, but I, I get started and I have a hard time. I, I got so much I want to say that I was trying to, to, to crowd it all into, but I don't want to do that. But I want to look at some scriptures that that show us if, if they would have searched the scriptures, they would have found that Jesus, their Messiah, would come and would come in two fa two phases for them. One would be he would be born a, a, a servant, a suffering servant, and the other he would he would come back as a king of king and lord of lords. And they saw that as two different individuals, not one. Which it turns out to be it was Jesus was the was the one that come as a baby and Jesus will, will be the one that comes back as king of king and lord of lords at the end of the great tribulation but if they would have searched the scriptures they would have saw that it didn't have there wasn't two of them fulfilling those two different time periods but it was one progressive he came in as 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 a little baby born and you know he took on flesh he's got in the flesh and 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 he did what he did by living a perfect life going to the cross going in the tomb coming out of the tomb going back to the father and, and then he told the disciples i will come again progression okay and they 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 you miss a lot of things when you don't look at the scriptures if you don't sit down and take time and read the scriptures and and understand what the scriptures are saying you miss a lot about the mind of God for you and for me the Bible is the voice of God to us and if we're not reading the Bible we're not hearing the voice of God to us amen the scriptures are the voice of God to us <clears throat> anyway there's a few prophecies like in uh, Isaiah 11 and 1 it says there shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse and a branch shall grow out of his roots Jeremiah 23 and 5 
Behold, the days are coming, saith the Lord, that I will raise to David, I will raise to David a branch of righteousness, a king shall reign and prosper and execute judgment and righteousness in the earth. Now the fulfillment of that is Matthew 1 and 1. So it's a prophecy. Jesus fulfilled this prophecy. And if the Jews would have went back and read the scriptures, then they would have found out that he was the Messiah. The book, Matthew 1 and 1, the book of the genealogies of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Okay, that is the rod that would come from the stem of Jesse. Jesse was David's father. You remember uh, 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 Boaz and Ruth? The story, it's in the book of Ruth. Boaz and Ruth got married. Boaz was a Jew. Ruth was a Gentile. And they got married. And they produced a son called Obed. Obed produced a son called Jesse, and Jesse produced a son called David. So David, Jesus would come through that lineage all the way up to Mary and Joseph, which was both proved to show that they was of the lineage that, that David was from. But that was a prophecy. They would have seen that it says it says uh, Jesse mentioned in Isaiah 11 one was the father of the greatest king David during Jesus ministry some people quickly become convinced that he was the promised son of David then during Jesus triumphant entry into Jerusalem several days before he was crucified the multitudes went in before and those who followed cried out saying Hosanna 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 to the son of David. This is Jesus Christ when he's riding the donkey into, into Jerusalem. And four days later, they would take him out and crucify him. Matthew 21 and 9. But they recognized him. This, this, the angel said, told Mary that she would bear a son and call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. So if they would read the scriptures, and like I said earlier, if we don't read the scriptures, we'll be getting the same mess as they got into. <coughs> if you believe that. So we want to, we want to, we want to be sure, real sure, that we, we recognize the scriptures and, but you won't recognize the scriptures if you don't study them. You, ha you have to study the scriptures. And by studying the, the scriptures, you'll find out whether or not they, they testify of Jesus. Okay, so Jesse was David's dad or David's father. And... And they was from the tribe of Judah, and Jesus was prophesied that he would come from the tribe of Judah, and the when he made his arrival at his first coming. Now we're talking about his first coming. Let me see what else we got here. So anyways, we want to look, we want to continue to look at, at his first coming. Okay. 
and try to keep it in 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 its each each thing in its in its proper in its in its proper in its proper place uh, and if we can do that anyways if we can do that then we'll we'll be uh, uh, we won't err. See, they erred. They erred uh, to the point that they missed the Messiah. Because he was born, the, the, the scriptures bear witness of him. So we have to realize that there's a lot of scriptures uh, in the Bible that pinpoint the Messiah. In other words, if you would read the scriptures and take time to study them, you would find out that they, they, they pinpointed this one that we call Jesus, Yeshua, that their Messiah they would have recognized him as the Messiah. See, Jesus was born of the seed of woman, the virgin birth, and that's in Genesis 3 and 15. Genesis 3 and 15, right after the fall, you find the first prophetic uh, prophecies of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it says, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Okay? It says, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. And, he, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Satan did bruise the heel, Satan, of Jesus. When he, when, when he was on the cross... That part of the prophecy was fulfilled, but the other part said he would bruise his, bruise Satan's head, and because of the crucifixion and, and because of him going into the grave and coming up out of the grave, he has the keys to death and hell. So you see, that prophecy was that prophecy was fulfilled uh, among many. I'm I'm not going to give a whole lot of them here. You can go online and as I have done, and you can find and see that that the prophecy that i mean it's it's overwhelming like i said somewhere around 300 prophecies that show you and it show those people of that day and time when jesus said search the scriptures he's saying go look at these scriptures and see if i'm the one see if i'm fulfilling these scriptures okay and there's so many of them he would come of the seed of David. That's the one I just said. Uh, he would be born in, in Job 9. He would be born a uh, mediator between man and God. Christ stood on that cross be between heaven and earth. He was the mediator uh, between us and God. There's just so many of them. Uh, the psalm said that he would rise from the dead. It says in, in Psalms uh, chapter 16, Therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoice. My flesh also shall rest in hope. For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption. Thou wilt show me the path of life in the presence of fullness of joy and thy, and thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Jesus' body wouldn't lay in the grave and see corruption, but it would raise, and it did on the third day. And that's it. And he fulfilled these promises. Uh, here's one that says they, they seek his death. 
uh, that these are prophecies. It says, Many bulls have compassed me about. Bulls of Bashan have, have beset me around. They gaped at me. They gaped upon me with their mouths as a raving and uh, roaring lion. So that's what they did when he was hanging on the cross. See, all these prophecies that I'm reading, the Bible said that in, in, the, in the form of a of a prophecy they prophesied that that he's, that his uh that he thirst you remember on the cross when jesus said i thirst he said my strength is dried up like a posture and my tongue uh cleaveth to my jaws and thou hast brought me into the dust of death and when so when Jesus said I thirst that that prophecy said that he would be the one who would declare that <clears throat> all right and then here's one uh, you remember on the cross if you look at it says they pierced his hands and his feet and that's found in Psalms uh, 16 no Psalms 22 I'm sorry it says for <clears throat> it says for dogs have compassed me the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me then they pierce my hands and my feet okay and that was fulfilled I want to read that that was fulfilled in John We'll just read John 19 and 34. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, and forthwith came there out blood and water. Okay? It says, it says here that they pierced his hands and his feet. And, and then again, in John 19, it says, And again, another scripture says, They shall look on him whom they have pierced. Whom they have pierced. You remember when Jesus was hanging on the cross and he said, I thirst. All this is, is the scriptures that Jesus told them to search. If you really want to know if I'm the Messiah, if I'm the one that Moses spoke about, go and read your scriptures. Study your scriptures, for they are they that testify of me, Jesus said. And so they pierced his side. Okay, and then in John 19, it says that they said, Therefore among themselves, let us not rend it, but cast lots for it. Whom shall it be that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith the Lord? They parted my raiment among them, and, on, and for my vesture they did cast lots, the things where thereof the soldiers did. Okay. So all these scriptures show of his first coming, and that's what I'm trying to do. I'm, I'm not trying to do a, a long study on the, on the first coming. I just want to show the progressiveness of God, and just because Jesus was crucified and put in the grave and went back to heaven, they don't, you, can, you can expect the same scriptures that, that showed his first coming, the same scriptures will show, his, that will show the rapture of the church, and then his second coming. And he was stripped. He was stripped. Uh, they, uh, they stripped him before the, star, the stairs of men. And when you go read it, I may tell all my bones, they look and they stare upon me. Okay? And when we, read, when we read Luke 23 and 24, it says, Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast, cast lots. Prophecy, one right after another. All they'd have to do is go and read this. Uh, the Bible says he would commit himself to God. In Psalms 22, save me from the lion's mouth, 
for thou hast heard me from the bones of the unicorn. He, they, they parted his garments. He committed himself. Satan's power bruising the Redeemer's heel. Uh, it's, they, they declared his resurrection. In Psalms, you need to read Psalms 22 in the Old Testament. Read Psalms 22 as often and as much as you can. And it shows, it shows our Lord uh, being crucified, being stripped, being spit upon, and, and being whipped. And, it, and, it's, and all that is because of the prophecy in Psalms 22. And in Psalms 22 it says, I will declare thy name unto my brethren, and in the midst of the congregation I will praise them. And that happened in, uh, let's see, what my, uh, yeah, well, we'll go on. We'll go down to, uh, down to his resurrection. Uh, his resurrection was predicted in the Old Testament. One time my brother, he told me, he says, you can't preach Jesus out of the Old Testament. And I says, I sure can. He said, I don't think so, Steve. And so I started giving him a few scriptures, and I could see he was, and I pointed to the scriptures of the Old Testament, which is all the scriptures they had during the time of Jesus. And I started pointing out some of the scriptures like I'm doing right now, and the presence of God just filled the room, and I could tell that it was having a, a, a real effect on him. But... It says the resurrection was predicted in Psalms in uh, Psalms chapter 30. The Lord, O Lord, thou hast brought me up. He has brought up my soul from the grave. Thou hast kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit. Now that was an Old Testament uh of Jesus going to be and listen what what Peter said in Acts the first chapter it says in, in verse 11 which also said you men of Galilee why standing ye gazing up into heaven the same Jesus which was taken up from you from heaven shall also in like manner as you have seen him go into his house he was resurrected And then the Bible, the Bible prophesied this. He said, into thy hands I commit. Remember when Jesus was dying? And he said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. He did that because he was fulfilling the prophecies that they was told to go and read. Okay? He says, in Psalms 31, into thine hand I commend, I commit my spirit. Thou hast redeemed me, O Lord, God of my truth. Anyway, there's just so many, uh, so many scriptures prophesying about his first coming. And you need to go do a good study. Type it in. Prophecies fulfilling the first coming. And you'll see that Jesus was the Messiah. No doubt about it. No question whatsoever. And you won't. It'll just convince you 100%. And if, and if, if, if the first coming prophecies was so accurate and so right and so fulfilled, why wouldn't the rapture and the second coming prophecies do the same thing? Uh, he, was, he, would be, he would be betrayed by a by a friend a familiar friend and it says in, in in psalms chapter 41 yea my own familiar friend in whom i trusted which did eat of my bread hath lifted up his heels against me remember that remember judas betrayed him with a kiss Remember when Jesus was being arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane that, and they was getting ready to take him and, 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 and start all the prophecies of the crucifixion? 
Jesus was be betrayed him. He was his friend. Jesus, Judas was one of them. He was he was their friend, and he betrayed the Lord. He he had told the the guards and the ones that he showed where Jesus was. It was in the garden. He ran and he give he told them the one that I kiss on the cheek, that'll be the one that you want. And when he got there, listen to what Judas. Listen to what Judas did. In John chapter 13, I, he, Jesus said, there's going to be one that betray me. He says, I speak not of you all. I know whom I have chosen, but that the scripture may be fulfilled. He that eateth bread with me hath lifted up his heels against me. Okay? That was Judas Iscariot. Remember at the, at the, at the Lord's Supper, the Last Supper, just before he was crucified and he was with them with his disciples and he said one of you is going to betray me and they began to say lord is it me is it me lord is it me and he said it'll be the one that i when i sought this bread in into the into the juice it, it'll be him and then he told judas to get up and go do that that he had to do because he was betrayed why was he betrayed because the Psalms 41 said he would be betrayed. And Jesus said that the scripture might be fulfilled. He's talking about the Old Testament. I read it to you. He said he, he had a familiar friend and he would lift up his heels against him. And Jesus said it was Judas and Judas betrayed him and lifted up his heels against him. So, oh, the word of God is just so wonderful. Then you see uh, this. See, I'll pick out a couple more good ones, then I'm going to stop. Uh, there's so many of them here. Uh, in, in Psalms, I mean, not Psalms, but uh, in Isaiah 7 and 14, the prophet Isaiah, 750 years before. Uh, the crucifixion he said this therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign behold a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and and shall call his name Emmanuel okay now that's a prophecy of a son being born by a virgin and he would be called Emmanuel God which means God with us and in Luke 1 and 35 in the New Testament the angel and the angel answered and said unto her the holy ghost shall come upon thee and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the son of god <laughs> oh, i just wish i could help us to understand that we need to study the scriptures so we can get some answers to our questions you see, the more we, we study the scriptures, the more we live in faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The more the word of God that we hear, the, the stronger our faith becomes and the more that we're able to stand fast and not be removed from the faith. Now, I know a lot of folks don't believe you can be removed from the faith, but you can be removed from the faith. But if you want to stay strong, uh, in the faith and stay strong in the word okay uh, then uh, let's look at uh, it says it says in Isaiah 9 and 6 for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called him Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. And the Prince of Peace. I knocked over my coffee. And he shall be called the Prince of Peace. And in, in Isaiah 9 and 7, it says, Of the increase of his government, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it 
with justice, with justice from henceforth and forever, the zeal of the Lord will perform it. He was to inherit David's throne, and we've talked about that. In in Luke, it said, uh, Luke one it says, "He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of David his father." You see. You see what I'm saying? The scripture is just full. Uh, boy, there is so many. And remember Isaiah was 750 years before the crucifixion. You can't manipulate that. You can't fix that. That's just exactly what it was. Because 750 years later, the, the man called Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, walked into the, the streets of Jerusalem and he fulfilled these prophecies. Anyway, I'm, I'll do one or two more. I don't know how long this is getting, but we'll see what happens. The Bible says in Isaiah 53, it says, it says <clears throat> that he would be numbered with the transgressors. Now listen to this. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoils with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and bare the sin of many, and, they, and made intercession for the transgressor. Praise his holy name. Now, in Mark uh, 15, and with him they crucified two thieves. One was on his right hand and the other was on his left. And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith he was numbered with the transgressors. Now, how, how did you get that? The transgressors was a thief on one side and a thief. They were transgressors. They deserved it, from what I understand, what what they were getting. And he was in. The, he was on the on the middle cross, and he was numbered with them. And the prophet said again, 750 years before it happened, that when it does happen, they would be. He would be numbered with the transgressors. Okay. This going down. Uh, the scripture says that that he would be born in Bethlehem. But thou, Bethlehem, though thou be little among thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall come forth unto me. That is to be ruler in Israel, who's going forth forever. Uh, and then, if you read Matthew. Two, it says now now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, of Judea in the days of Herod the king behold there came him wise men from the east saying where is he that is born king of the Jews we have heard we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him when Herod heard this they, they heard the king had been, whoops, <coughs> let me find my place again, it says when Herod heard king, when Herod the king had heard these things he was troubled with all Jerusalem and when he had gathered, and when he had gathered all the people to come and, and said where, where should Christ be born, okay, Let's see, where was I at? Luke 20. So anyways, Jesus was born in Bethlehem. They, Jesus would live in Nazareth, and he would be called the Nazarene. But because he grew up in, in, in Nazareth, a little town right there outside of, of Jerusalem, because he was, 
he grew up in Nazareth doesn't necessarily have to mean that he was born there. He wasn't born there. Remember Herod? You remember the Roman government was going to tax the people? So in order to pay the taxes, they all had to go back to where they were from, and that was Bethlehem. And while they was in Bethlehem, Mary had the little baby, our Lord, in, in Bethlehem. Then they went back, to make a long story short, then they went back to their hometown where they, where they lived, and it was Nazareth. And that's why he would be born, the prophet said, in Bethlehem, but he would grow up and be called a Nazarene. There's so many here, I'm going to have to stop because it's getting very long. But uh, I'm, my next one I'm going to do is it'll either be the rapture or it'll be the second coming. I haven't made up my mind how I want to, how I want to, uh, how I want to do this. But, but go and type it in and read all these prophecies that Jesus told the people on that day. Look. If you don't believe me then believe the scriptures if you don't believe I'm the one that Moses taught go read your scriptures because they 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 said they loved the scriptures they loved Moses and the law and they was careful to make sure all the scriptures were protected and Jesus told them go read the scriptures and there's oh like I said there's over 300 of them and I think you'll be blessed to find that the first coming of Jesus was prophesied about, the second coming of Jesus by the same scriptures was prophesied about, and also the rapture is also prophesied about. And I think you'll find that to be a great blessing. It might encourage you, it might give you hope of the scripture. You might say, wow, they do testify this one who they call Jesus. Maybe he was the one. Maybe his, his death on the cross is real. Maybe, maybe the beatings and the sufferings and the sorrow and the pain that he felt in our place, maybe I could trust him to be my Savior. Maybe I could trust him to be my Lord. Maybe he is the answer to my problems. Because he said, come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Maybe he could be the one. And if you would go and search the scriptures and see if they testify of him, and believe me, in the Old Covenant versus the New Covenant, there's a lot of years taking place. You can't fix them. No man could put them in that order that they would be fulfilled that way, except it be by the Holy Spirit who inspired the living Word of God. And it's written in such a way to give us faith, to give us hope, to build up encouragement in our spirits, and to trust this one that was born of the Virgin that would be called Emmanuel, God with us, Yeshua the Christ. God bless you.